already existed. The music presenter view for the first time, by the way. So if I make funny faces with my laptop, it's because I don't know how to use it. Um, if you don't know what I look like, there's a picture. Um, I've been in security for going on nine years now, right around in there. Um, a lot of my background is DOD. I uh, branched into the commercial world more recently, and I'm enjoying that tremendously. I do a lot of uh, physical penetration testing, um, some network stuff too, social engineering, obviously. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to SecureCon. I mean, I know that we're sponsoring these sites. We don't always sponsor the cons that I go to, but they pay for me to come out to cool places like this and talk to cool people like you. So thank you, SecureCon. Again, we're hiring, come talk to me. So I realized that this is a first con for a lot of people here today. I thought that was kind of interesting. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what social engineering is first, before we talk about hacking the operating systems of humans. Social engineering is basically using persuasion techniques to get a person to give you some kind of information or to do some kind of action to help you in an attack. Thank you. Um, those in the back, am I loud enough? Is that good? Plus, okay. If I'm not, just let me know. So what kind of information are social engineers looking for? Sometimes it's really sensitive stuff. Stuff that people know that they're not supposed to give out, but they probably will anyway. IP addresses are great ones. Employee ID numbers are almost trivial to get from just about anywhere. Um, when, once you start getting into passwords, sometimes you get some resistance there. Those attacks aren't always successful. The ones that tend to be even more successful are the ones where we look for data that doesn't necessarily seem sensitive to a lot of folks. So things like office codes or, you know, what, what's your office number? Uh, stuff like phone numbers. A lot of times if I'm going to do a phone social engineering exercise, I'll call into accounts receivable for that company. <coughs> because they're always going to answer the phone because everybody wants to get paid, right? So when they answer the phone, I say, oh, I'm sorry, I was actually looking for so-and-so in IT, can you transfer me? This does two things. First of all, this gets me to so-and-so in IT without having to dial direct. Second of all, it makes it look like I'm calling from an internal number. So then I can use that to my advantage against my target. So why does this work? I mean, wh why does this work anyway? Why do people tell me this information that they're not supposed to tell me? People just like to be helpful. We're trained that way from a very young age, that we're supposed to be kind to one another, right? Do unto others and all that good stuff. A lot of people, even though there are security awareness training programs out there, they're really just unaware of what the threat is. If a security awareness program covers social engineering, it's usually like two bullets at the bottom of a slide, like toward the end of the training at that point. So you're already just clicking through the slides at that point and you're not reading anyway. There, there really isn't a lot of high quality training out there to teach folks about social engineering. That's starting to change, but it's, it's very slow. Um, and it, going along with being unaware of that threat, a lot of times folks will give you a lot of free information, stuff that they don't really think is sensitive at all. So we've been ingrained that password is sensitive, right? So if I ask you for your password, you might get a little suspicious. There are my raffle tickets. Look at that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. You delivered. Thank you, sir. Welcome, lady. Now I have to find another excuse to give him a hard time today. <laughs> <laughs> we need an excuse. That's true. Not fun. <laughs> anyway, so if I call a help desk and I ask them to reset somebody's password, they're probably going to ask me a lot of questions and, you know, what, what's that person's employee ID number, where do they work, lots of stuff that I might need to know. But if I call and ask for that username, hey, I forgot my username to get on the computer. It's, it says that it's wrong. I know that the password is right because I use the same password for everything. Can you tell me what my username is? And most of the time, people will just spit that out. Even though, as you know, as hackers, that's 50% of the puzzle, right? I need a username list and a password list if I'm going to try to brute force something. 
So that just helps me understand that, okay, I formatted my list right. And that person on the other end of the phone doesn't even realize that they've given me something that they shouldn't have. Um, and the government, they call this aggregation of data. You take a little piece from one person, a little piece from another person, put it together, and then you get something really good. So I like to start off most of my corporate talks with this quote. Technology will continue to advance, but the greatest vulnerability will always be in the human behind the keyboard. That's always going to be true. Doesn't matter how many times you patch windows or you patch whatever, the most vulnerable thing in your network is the person that uses it. Because they're harder to patch. That's a whole other separate talk. I only have like 15 minutes, so we're not getting into that. This is meant to be a fun talk. Okay, I'm gonna pick on guys, I'm gonna pick on girls. It's not meant to be sexist in any kind of way. When you do social engineering, you have to approach your targets differently. Um, when I approach a male target, I'm going to act completely different than if I approach a female target. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, I'm just saying that's how it is, and that's how it works. So if you're easily offended, now might be a good time to go uh, get some more breakfast. <laughs> So let's talk about the female operating system, guys. This, this also will, will help you in Relationship 101. I don't do any um, marriage counseling or any of that, but you might be able to apply a lot of these same principles. So females are kind of a lot like Linux, all right? So I have to put this in geeky terms so that people can understand it. We like words. We like a lot of words. This is why women read romance novels, right? We, we like words. We especially like words that provoke emotion. Female minds are mainly emotionally based. So the key to, I won't necessarily say completely social engineering, but for social engineering females, it's all about using the right words to provoke the right emotion to get the response that you want. They're based around empathy. <coughs> And I don't think that empathy is much as popular as um, you know, a lot of the other social engineering terms like deception and things that are mainstream. But basically, you know, with empathy, when they see a certain situation, they react a certain way. Female brains are also kind of like TCP, all right? They're, they're a connection-based protocol, right? Honey, does this make my butt look big? That's the sin. The NAC is no dear, right? Uh, <laughs> and the act is okay. And then 30 seconds later, it's, are you sure this doesn't make my butt look big? So it always needs that, that continual connection, just like TCP. I spent a lot of time looking at PCAP files, so excuse me if that comes off a little nerdy. <laughs> Women also like things that are more community-based. Right? They, they like to know that others are like them that they're normal, whatever that is. Commonality builds credibility with women. So a lot of times when they share experiences, they're more likely to trust that person. So when they relate to experiences and emotions, the easiest way that I can think of to explain this is like if statements, going back to the geek talk. So <laughs> if I create a situation of stress, then normally that action that comes afterwards is they want to soothe or they want to help or they want to make it they want to make it better right so if I'm running through this building that I've already social engineered my way into and I'm on my way to a meeting and I drop my handouts all over the floor in front of this person's desk and I say oh my goodness I'm late for my meeting these are not my slides can you please print my slides off of this thumb drive so now I don't even have to try to plug it into the machine. They've already done it for me. Oh, my presentation's not on there? That's not good. Give me that back. I have to go. And I just take off running down the hallway. Here, let me put this live CD in before I plug it in. Or the auto run exploit works really well out of the social engineering toolkit if you haven't used it yet. Might want to check it out. So another if statement. So if there's uncertainty. Everybody's been the new person on the job, right? At one point or another. The best way I've found to make this work for me 
is to ask where the ladies' room is. Something about females, they like to go to the ladies' room in groups. <coughs> but it also, it's a, it's a very non-threatening question. It's a perfectly valid question. So when I ask <coughs> them that, then normally what happens is they walk me down there, and then they kind of chit-chat with me a little bit. It doesn't matter that I'm not wearing a badge or that I'm not supposed to be there. They're not thinking about that. I've distracted them enough to where they want to help me, even though I probably shouldn't be there. So it basically boils down to if you give expected input, then you're going to get expected output. So let's talk about guys a little bit. All right? I apologize in advance if this offends you. <laughs> but guys are kind of like windows. Sorry, guys. And it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, like Vista or any other flavor. It's just kind of a general statement. Guys are gooey based. You know, you, you like pictures and visuals. This is why women read romance novels, right? They read those words that provoke emotions. Men need to see a situation to provoke emotions. What are you talking That's about? That's why they read romance novels and guys look at penthouse. More? 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 Yeah, Read it for the article. <laughs> yes, the article. Uh, so yeah. I've been told. <laughs> but guys are also very credibility based. And that's very different from what we just talked about with women, isn't it? And I think that this is, this is Val's kind of unofficial theory as to why there aren't as many females in technology these days, and IT in particular. Um, a lot of guys are very based on credibility. So I have to prove to you that I know what I'm talking about before you'll accept me and respect me as a coworker when it comes to technical things, right? And women, they think just because we're in the same situation that we both have the same job, that you should already respect me because I'm, I'm one of you. I don't have to prove that, I'm already one of you. So I think that there's a little bit of disconnect there between um, male and females in IT especially because I've seen it a lot. So this was a study done by the Telegraph a while back, and they brought in some, some pretty women, and they, they talked to the guys afterwards, and the guys couldn't even write down their address after the pretty woman had left. This is a little strange. There's also a lot of research done on these types of subjects in marketing. It's a little unexpected. But if you think about it, the same principles apply with social engineering. All right, guys, they want to distract you with pictures of whatever so that you're not thinking clearly so they can sell you stuff. Like the GoDaddy girls. So they can sell you bad web hosting or they can sell you bad <laughs> I mean, it, it all works around visuals. So if you start to look at marketing that way, that's exactly what happens. They distract you, and because you're like Windows, something like that is going to happen, right? <laughs> I didn't have a kernel panic shot for the ladies. That's unfair. I apologize. So if I'm social engineering a male target, after that BOSOD happens, after they're distracted enough, I have a lot of different options. Tailgating, I don't even really have to try at tailgating. Just, it's a natural thing. Guys are taught from a young age to open the door for a lady. It doesn't matter if that door has a Prox card scanner or not. They just don't think about it. They open the door and they let me in. The other thing is you could get them talking, right? So credibility <coughs> I don't know anything yet because I haven't proved it to you. So I can be stupid all day long <laughs> because I haven't proved it. So if I distract long enough, I can get one of my other coworkers to do maybe a risky attack at that time to where it's, it's almost a cloak and dagger thing, right? So you got your distraction over here and then your attacker goes around the other side. And it makes a great stupid user ploy, unfortunately. If I call a help desk and I get a male help desk person, I'm gonna act stupid. I'm gonna put in some chewing gum and I'm just gonna not know anything about how this works. If I have a female when I make that call, completely different situation, I'm probably gonna cry so that I can get my password reset. <laughs> but either way, it works. You just have to know how to approach it differently. So that is my 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame. Uh, those of you that are signed up for the class tomorrow, that's awesome. We're going to have a really good time. If you're not signed up, 
Um, come see the registration folks in the morning. They do have a wait list, I think, <coughs> so they'll let folks in as space opens up in the classroom. So this is me. Um, one last thing, we're also going to be giving away the Wiki Pineapple, as I mentioned earlier, now that I have tickets. So we will hold these up at the registration desk. If you give me like 10 minutes, I'll be back there with the tickets and some acceptable object to put them in. You'll need to be here at the end of the day, though, in order to receive it. So if you're not going to hang around all day, don't, don't waste my tickets. <laughs> and that's all the time I have. So I will be around if you guys have any questions, and thanks for having me.